Hi guys, it's Roxanne, your favorite queen, B. I know it's been forever. Um, I don't know if you can tell. Um, I actually got finally a, what do you call it? A ring light. There we go. Um, so I'm actually able to shoot, in my opinion, a better quality video. Um, it also, it come with the stand that can also be um, lowered down to tabletop level, which is what I've got it now. And then it can also be extended up to, I think, five feet. Um, and then it also has the ring light extension, but also has diff uh, two or three different ways for you to put your phone on um, to where you can video, much like I am right now, hands-free without anything being propped up. So that's nice. Um, I feel bougie with my ring light, um, but I love it. So today I figured we are still under quarantine. There's not a lot I can really get out and do. I can still get out, but here in North Carolina right now, it is like 500 degrees out. So even if you can get out and do anything, you don't want to, at least not in the heat of the day. So I haven't been able to get up and really kind of just doll myself up and do some makeup and um, I think I did a video a while back maybe a year ago or so or something similar to this um, but of course without proper lighting and everything and so I thought I'd give it a shot and just kind of talk to y'all catch up see what's going on um, let you know a little bit about what's going on with me um, it's not a lot but then again I think everyone can say that you know um, this quarantine has got me losing my mind at times but then at other times I'm so thankful that I am able to stay home and spend this time with my family um, so with all that being said I think we are going to jump right into it um, I am going to be uh, drinking I've got some sparkling water right here in my uh, queen glass that Matt had gotten for me last year so cheers to you guys and we are going to begin Mmm, so good. Alright, so I have freshly washed in my face. Um, don't have nothing on it. I do have some, you see some acne going on. You know, who says when you are out of your teenage years that you no longer get acne? They are lying. I am 34 years old and I still break out like a teenager and it makes no sense at all. Um, so... I am going to, I have a lot of uh, medicine, really. I have a lot of makeup here. Um, I, by no means, am a professional, not even close. Half the time, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I do like to watch a lot of YouTube videos on tutorials on how to do makeup. Sometimes it helps. I mean, one of my favorites, besides Tati herself, is James Charles and... Um, couple other ones um, them are my two favorites um, so I've learned a lot from them or at least I think I have but still to this day because I am so fair-skinned and you see my eyebrows here you can see them but they're not prominent and they're not dark like most people's um, I've never ever learned how to um, to do my own eyebrows as far as shaping them and coloring them in and stuff and so I still don't and so a lot of times when my makeup for me is completed a lot of times I'll get a lot of comments like, well, you need to do your eyebrows. I need someone to come teach me because I'm scared to death I'm going to draw them in and they're going to look like, um, do you remember back in the 90s when it was real popular for the girls to have to draw like just the line? Do you remember that? Um, I'm afraid it's going to look like that or I'm just going to mess it all up. So a lot of times I just don't do it at all, period, because I don't know what I'm doing. When I was younger and a teenager, and um, while I'm talking to you, I'm going to go ahead and get started and pull some stuff out. And I'll show you everything as I go, um, what I have and what I use. So kind of go there. But anyways, when I was younger, into my teenage years, and I started really experimenting with makeup and um, hair color and changing your hair and everything, anytime I would go darker, because I did go dark brown, dark black, and also burgundy and red. I had, I've had every hair color imaginable, natural and unnatural through my years. And um, so of course when I would go darker, I always would, um, dye my eyebrows. And originally it would be so weird and awkward looking because I'm like, 
I can see my eyebrows. It's weird. And I get compliments. Oh, wow, you really look good. It really frames your face, blah, 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 blah. But, of course, anyone that has ever dyed their hair and dyed their eyebrows with it, which probably isn't recommended, um, knows that they fade really fast. And then you're still left with having to do touch-ups and stuff like that. And so I just give up, long, long story short. Okay. I do have this to say that during the summertime, I – it's probably not uh, – feminine to say it all or whatever but I sweat like a pig during the summer I cannot help it and so with that being said I tend to not put a lot of um, liquid um, uh, makeup on me as far as um, foundation um, I will do a couple spot treatments especially because like I like you see I have you know acne so I'll try to cover that up with some um, concealer um, but besides that, um, I usually try to save that for more special occasions, you know, more more full coverage concealer and and um, foundation and stuff like that. Um, but during the summer, if I if I decide to wear makeup, which a lot of times I'm so scared it's just going to melt off of me that I try not to do a lot because um, I am naturally beautiful, you know. Um, wow. So full of myself, Roxanne. But anyway, so I don't know how some of these women can do a full makeup in high humidity, hot weather, and it just stays on there and it doesn't melt. I feel like I'm like in an oven and I'm just like melting off. And so with all that being said, I'm not actually going to do concealer. I do have... So anyways, I don't even think... Look, I'm so unprepared. unprepared. I have a couple different brushes, but none of them are for like liquids. I did have a beauty whatever not a, not the official beauty blender but you know one of the knockoff ones I think I got mine from like the Dollar Tree and I don't have it no more so with that being said I am going to have to use my concealer here and just use my fingers and kind of dab it and, and blend it that way I guess so this is the only concealer I have I'm trying to see if I have some primer or something to go on first. Is this primer? Yes. Okay, so this is primer. And this is from Maybelline Master Prime Primer Base Hydrate and Smooth. Look at you, Roxanne. I'm getting there. Yeah, there we go. Got it. So I'm going to use some of that. Maybe if there's any left. Oh, geez. Okay. Okay. So I've got some of this. So it is July, th no, today's July 12th. How's everyone doing? <sighs> I have doctors tomorrow. I had been trying to get up with my doctors for like the last two weeks. I had been out of medicine. And because of the whole COVID, a lot of the stuff has been canceling. And you have to do over the phone interviews or not interviews, but um, over the phone discussions and even doing like FaceTime with your doctors which is fine I prefer that because um, myself I have to when I go to the doctors my doctor it's it's for my pain it's a pain clinic for my back um, to get my pain medicine it's over in Greenville you know which I live here in Washington so it's not that big of a deal it's what 20 30 minutes at the most depending on who's driving but I take um, public transportation which is a cab to and from all my doctors um, I am on Medicaid, and one one of the, I guess, benefits, it is really, is that if you do have Medicaid or Medicare, um, they will they will provide you for free transportation to and from your doctors anywhere in the state. Um, so that's really nice, especially when it comes down to gas being expensive or not having a reliable vehicle. So I do have that tomorrow at 1045. The only downfall with them is you gotta give and take what you can though is a lot of times now I haven't been over there since the whole COVID situation has broken out but I know in the past when I go especially close by like Greenville or even here in Washington um they'll usually take three to five people with them at one time so they'll drop everyone off um and then they wait until everybody calls in and says they're done, and then they'll come back through and take one big loop and take everyone home, unless someone's having to take a really long time, do a procedure or something like that. And so I'm hoping that's kind of not what's going to happen tomorrow, but if it does, it does, you know. Can't have it all. 
I mean, they say you can't have your cake and eat it too, but I say you can. So, <laughs> okay, so this is my concealer I'm going to use. It is Rimmel London Stay Matte Soft Matte Concealer Full Coverage, and it is in the um, shade 011 Porcelain. So that's what I've got. And I, honest to God, I don't use this very much unless I have very prominent um, marks or if I had a really bad night and um, I had dark circles under my eyes, which as you get older, that becomes more, more to see. So I am not going to have my face all up in the camera. I'm going to use my, my mirror here, but I'll turn my face so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Basically, I'm just going to hit the spots that are angry and red because I'm a picker. Can anyone else relate to that? Um, you ever go to a dermatologist or even, you know, watch the stuff that's online and they will swear to you that that's the absolute worst thing you can do if you have a breakout is to pick it and to make it worse, you know? I can't help it. Like, if it's there, I've got to pick it and it probably would heal 90% faster. But because... I don't know how to not touch my face if there's something on there. It makes it worse. So I'm trying to cover it up right now. Like I said, I don't think I have a beauty blender or anything in here. And the brushes I do have are not for foundation or not for liquid, you know. So I don't want to really mess them up. So I'm just going to kind of pat this in, hope for the best. I will say though, which is kind of cool, is um. Of course, my son, Eric, he just turned 16 on July 6th. Um, he turned 16 years old, um, so that's, I, where has the time gone? But he had been saying that since he, since he's been about 15, he'd been wanting to get a job. That's wonderful. A child actually wants to go out and get a job, I'm all for, and so, I'd helped him make up a resume because I know everything now has to be done online and I looked into the whole youth um, work certificate that they have to have being a minor and working you know most time it's fast food or bagging or something like that at a grocery store and um, so I looked into all that we was able to get all that done um, put in applications submitted resumes and um, he had had quite a few interviews right off the bat a um, couple days before he even turned 16 um, so he was ecstatic oh my god we making money you know which is wonderful um, and he actually has got a job he starts tomorrow Monday July 13th um, we have a new Bojangles coming to town well it's the next town over which is literally 10 minutes from here um, in Chocowinity they have their grand opening on I believe July 21st is their first day of reopening and then shortly after that one gets up and going without any kinks they're going to be tearing down the one here in Washington because I think it's been here for many many moons and it's in need of desperate repairs and things it's had fires and different things happen to it through the years and so um, they will close down and I'm assuming they're either going to rebuild there or rebuild somewhere else in town but of course you know that's going to take some time so anyways Eric goes tomorrow at 4 p.m. so I'll be back in plenty of time for my doctor's appointment fingers crossed and um, me and mom will take him for his orientation and they told him for his orientation he needed to be dressed for work um, which includes they will provide him with two to three of the you know Bojangle t-shirts a hat of some kind and then also with masks being mandatory in everywhere they'll also provide him with some kind of a mask for him and then we have to supply the work pants which we got him a couple pair of dickies to get by with because they're the really best quality work pants you can have also some no slip shoes some undershirts white undershirts and then also some black socks um, stuff that he actually did not have in his wardrobe you know and so thanks to a kind donor and sweet friend I was able to get that for Eric so he would be ready to go come tomorrow so he's very excited 
my child is actually still sleeping right now. I tried to get him up around 2. It's like 3.30 right now. And with this whole COVID situation and the kids being home for like, what, three, four months now, everything, all their schedules, at least for my son anyways, is messed up as far as, especially now that school is technically out, you know, um, bless his heart. And he's a teenager. Teenagers can sleep. I know when I was a teenager, I could sleep. 16 hours, get up, eat, and want be tired and want to go right back to bed. Um, it has nothing to do with being depressed or anything. It's just their bodies are growing and they sleep much like a baby would, you know, when they're little and they're growing fast. Um, so he's definitely going to have to redo his schedule and get himself back into a normal routine, not only for his work schedule, but then also in the fall, if and when they decide to reopen the schools some I don't know. We don't even know what that's going to be like. I've heard different things as far as um, I don't think it's going to be fully open five days a week. Like we have always come to have them. This public school's open. It might be open two days for the students and then the rest would be online or they might have some come this day and some come that day. So I don't know. I'm just as confused as the next parent what's going on. Um, Eric did um, complete ninth grade with better grades than he had in class, which to me, I don't know, maybe it's had all the, um, something to do with all the distractions of friends and, you know, friends and just wanting to fit in and everything like that. So he actually passed. He's going into 10th grade. So that's wonderful. Um, cheers. I talk so much I had to get really thirsty. Okay, back to actually just not talk, just talking, but actually back to my makeup. Okay, I have recently... Some of my newer purchases I had gotten was the Physician's Formula. I like this a lot. I originally had, um, what is that other makeup? Um, Bare Minerals. I had gotten, um, had ordered some of that, God, I don't know, two years ago, three years ago, something like that. And had they had sent it to me, and I had used it sparingly, and I loved it. That's what made me switch a lot of the times from liquid medicine, medicine, oh my goodness, Roxanne, liquid makeup to powder makeup was, I preferred it because it felt like he wasn't wearing makeup. It still gave me the coverage I wanted, but it also didn't cake like a lot of the foundation does, unless I've just not been using the right kind of um, liquid makeup. Yeah, liquid makeup. So I am actually going to just pull my hair back, get that out of my face. For now so anyways this is the powder palette multicolored pressed powder physicians formula once again they're pricey in my opinion for makeup any makeup's expensive but especially for a drugstore makeup for me is expensive um, but I gotten this and you see it's just a whole bunch of different colors in there and it really helps with um, myself personally um, because I have such red cheeks and um I just have I'm not a, a even complexion and this to me between this and the actual foundation powder that I have to me it's it tends to make me a little bit more neutral so I don't look like I have rosacea you know so I'm just kind of using my little broke I have another I have a lot of other brushes but for some reason I like this one the best and it's the one that the handles broke off of you use what you got right okay so Top, top, top. I have no specific order on how I do this. I just do it until I feel like it looks good. Always got to do my forehead. Actually, I always make a joke. I don't have a forehead. I have a five head. You know, you have a forehead and you use like four fingers. Well, I actually have like a five finger forehead. My earphones just fell out. So. I always say, if you can't make fun of yourself in a loving way, you're not going to be able to handle the world. The world can be very cruel at times. I've also been really working on losing weight since being in quarantine. The last thing I wanted to do coming out of quarantine, whenever we do finally come out, is to be even more um, unhealthy. You know what I mean? And um, so I've really changed the way I've ate the way I eat, what I put into my body, um, sometimes you cannot help it. Um, I always try to do the salads and like lean cuisine meals. My whole thing is portion control. That's one reason I like the, um, the pre-made meals is because I know 
that's what I get, and that's it, along with a salad. You see what I'm saying? Like, because I still have a problem with what I consider, uh, uh, um, what I consider a amount for myself is not really a true amount for one person. You know what I mean? And so this way it helps me eat less but still feel like I'm getting what I need, you know. And so I do that and I am now down, I weighed myself yesterday morning and I am down a total of 32 pounds. I think that's wonderful. Um, my whole goal and I know most women don't tell their weight, especially if you're up there and you're a big girl like me. But I, when I started this, I was at 268. Not proud of that number at all, obviously. Um, but y'all have to remember, I am 5'1". I am a short person. So all my weight gets distributed right to the middle, right where I don't want it. And... Um, and so I'm 5'1", I was 268, I am now down to 2, was it 236, 236, 237, somewhere around there. And um, so I definitely am feeling better, but my goal is to be down to 200 um, with my height and my weight. Um, actually, I think 180 would be more ideal for my what for my for my height and things um but i would be happy with 200 i mean i haven't been down to 200 since before my son was born and so we're we're cooking on over 16 years now so definitely okay so i got this i've put it in down my neck that's about it you see you can still see my my stuff there it's that that um concealer probably didn't even do a good job but then again I didn't have a beauty blender to really blend it in there well so next I'm gonna take also from physicians formula it is the BB powder um, I like the BB powders and even the CC powders better than I do actual foundation just for me once again this is my preference um, sometimes it might not work for other people but for me I tend to like it and this is in the shade it's Super BB All-in-One Beauty Balm Powder, SPF 30, Broad Spectrum Sunscreen, Light to Medium is the shade. Okay, so it actually looks quite dark compared to me. But, once again, I don't have to use nowhere near as much as this as I did the other because this is um, pretty dark. I actually probably could have went with the really light shade, but this just gives me just a little touch of like a golden color. And so I just barely tap my brush into that. Just enough to kind of light my skin up. So this is going to be it. Very little bit. Like I said, I'm all for the least amount on my face. I love to watch when all these women do the contour and the shading and the highlighting. and But I, I just I, I cannot do it. Like I would be sweating while I'm putting it on. So, this is it. Anybody wants to come and help me, show me um, how to do a more glammed up look, I guess, you know, full, full coverage, everything. Come on, you can be in a video with me. We can make it, we can make it work. <laughs> and so, um, that's done. Um, as far as, now if I was using um, more of the liquid concealer um, with everything and then putting the powder over top um, like baking is what they call it I believe um, I do have the air spun which I prefer this a lot this is one of the recommendations I think um, maybe it was Toddy at one time when she was doing drugstore makeup as far as finding um, the powder to bake with and stuff this was one of her recommendations for um, drugstore buys you know and so I'd actually bought it I love the smell of it. It, I don't know. It's just me. I like the smell of it. So I'm not going to use that. I don't feel like I need it. Um, hi. This is it. No, this is it. This is it for my face as far as what I'm going to do. I do, or I will use some, um, I do have some blush. I don't normally, I don't think I need blush though because like you can still see the pink come through my face. So I actually don't think I need blush. Um, so I don't think I'm going to put the blush on. I do have some. Um, I have some warmth powder. 
guess I can put some of that on. I guess that's kind of like a um, bronzer a little bit to darken me up. I don't know. I might be doing this all wrong. Brushes are still fairly clean. Um, because I haven't really put no face makeup on this summer at all, They, um, I had washed them, I don't know, February, March, and I've probably maybe used them once or twice since then, so they're fine. Um, this is, once again, this is from Bare Minerals. This is something that I still have from them because I never really knew how to use it because it is a dark color. And uh, I was like, well, that's not my color. Um, so anyways, this is um, Mineral Bronzer, and it's Warmth Powders. The, the color of it is Warmth Powder. That's what it says. So I'm going to open this up, hopefully without it making a mess. Hmm. Like, I don't know. For me, that's really dark. So I am going to tap my brush into the actual lid tap off the extra and then they say to put it like at your forehead my five head and bring it down maybe I'm just scared of it but then again anyone that got into beauty had to experiment and I'm home it's not like I'm going out I don't believe I am we went to Walmart and picked up a few things yesterday and um I have no makeup on at all. It probably looked scary. That's alright. Why would, besides doing your eyes, there's no sense putting on makeup now because you have to wear a mask out. What was it? I posted that so that um, that meme or whatever I seen and I posted it and it said, all those people with them pretty eyes, this is your time to shine because now you got masks, all you can see is your eyes. And I'm like, I'll put some mascara on, some eyeliner, and that's it. I'll let my baby blues do the talk. <laughs> okay, so... I think they put it underneath your chin to like hide the actual double chin that I have. That's the case. I need to put like the whole bottle of it on there. Hi guys, how y'all doing? Let me stop. That was so unattractive. Ugh. No. Okay, so I put it on. I probably didn't put it on enough. I can't even see to tell the difference. No. My earphones about to fall out. Alright, so that's enough of that. I will put some um, highlighter on. I love highlighter. I get carried away with highlighter. That's my problem. So, I have a Milani highlighter, which I like a lot. And this one is Strobe Light 901 Milani. And then I also have is it in here? Um, one that I had gotten from one of my Ipsy bags. There for a while, when I could afford it, I had gotten the Ipsy subscriptions every month, and I loved it because, once again, it was um, products that I necessarily wouldn't buy or couldn't afford to buy um, from all the different makeup stores. God, I know them stores by heart. I've never been into one, but I've seen them. Um, anyways, you know, the real name brand makeups. And so this was from Nomad Cosmetics Stockholm Illuminating Highlighting Powder, and this was Midnight Sun. This one's a very, very bright highlighter, but it's more of a golden, golden hue. Um, really can't see it really good, but anyways. And then this one here is more of a pink, silvery shine. So let's go for this. Okay. I'm putting it on my finger. I know I'm probably doing it all wrong. No, I don't like that. Maybe I'll do it this way. Oh, yeah, you can see that. See? Blinding. Blinding. Have y'all seen, is anyone else obsessed with ASMR like I am? Okay, I'm willing. I'm going to put myself out on a limb here and make myself very vulnerable to y'all. And, um, I guess, I don't know. I definitely sometimes have trouble falling asleep at night, and it's more of turning my brain off than it is not being tired. You know, I just can't get my brain to stop thinking, um, going 90 miles an hour. And, um, oh yeah, and you gotta boop the nose. So you do, 
down the nose, and then boop. Right? And boop. Maybe I didn't have enough. Boop. And then they do it right here. Mm-hmm. And then right here. Is that about, is that about right? So anyways, back to what I was saying um, with the ASMRs. Now, late at night when I'm trying to go to sleep, I like to watch one or two of them that, and it's it, it's for sleeping, and it's basically these women, and they do makeup, um, doing skincare, and basically what I like to hear is the hair brushing and the back scratching. Like, that'll put me to sleep 10 minutes, I'm out every time. And um, so that's nice. But during the day, especially since, um, this is sound so weird, especially since I've been on my diet, and so I've limited myself to a lot of things that um, I can't eat. Um, not that I can't eat, that I'm choosing not to put in my body because I know it's not good. So you're thinking of like my favorite food of all time is pizza. Pizza is probably the one, one of the worst things you can get. Um, I have found the Lean Cuisine with kale on it um, and the crust is made from cauliflower. And so that's a lot better than the traditional pizza dough, you know, with everything. And so I'll have that every now and then when I'm craving it. But anyways candies, sodas, you know, all the junk food that put me in the position that I'm in. So now I'm trying to retrain my brain, but of course I still have them cravings. I have found that watching some of these shows is, um, I don't know if you want to call it helpful, but for me it is, but there's this one lady and I know y'all know, or at least seen her, um, screenshots going through, uh, what do you call it, going through YouTube, you know, trying to find something. I believe her name is Honeybee or something. And um, you always see the, she always likes to do like all reds or all blues or all um, rainbow. And um, she's adorable, this um, blonde-headed girl is. But I think her name is Honeybee, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. If I am, someone comment down below if I'm wrong. Um, but her, all of her videos always start with her placing everything on her table in front where you can see it so she likes to have a lot of jelly things and a lot of um spoons like edible spoons and she's also had like an edible hairbrush and so all these different things but every one of her videos starts off with she has these really long pretty nails and she goes hello 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 and then she goes how but uh, of course, with ASMR, you're whispering. You're not actually talking like how I am. And she's like, "How are you all doing today?" And then she's like, eh, "And it's oh my god, I, I could just watch the first five parts of her five minutes of her video of her doing that, and that's her intro to everything." And I. I'm guilty of watching the videos and I go into that rabbit hole of I start off with one and I'm like oh I only have like you know I only need to be on here for like 10 minutes I'll watch one or two of her videos and I'll be good two hours later 14 videos later I'm still watching them and I'm like I've been sucked I don't know what YouTube knows what y'all y'all know what y'all are doing when y'all recommend videos to us so 